Hey everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We're picking up exactly where we left off last episode. Alright, we're probably going to start seeing some engine failures here soon. I think we've officially been running those last four J2s a little beyond their specified burn time. But, you know, that's what happens when your center engine fails. You have to burn for longer. not gonna fail on me? That is super interesting. Good on ya. Alright, down to our single J2. Mm. It's gonna be really close on making this transfer to the moon, thanks to your way off trajectory ascent, Val. I totally blame you. And now my dog's here and she wants to party. So, if you hear strange dog-like noises, that's what's going on there. Man, hitting orbit soon sure would be nice. Save some of this Delta V for trying to get someplace else. You know, if we can do it with less than 1100 meters per second. Frank. This is her play noise, believe it or not. Okay, we are coming up on engine shutdown. Shutdown. Oh, hey, look at that. 167 by 162 kilometer. I'll take that. Any day of the week, really. All right, and here, map view, we will start plotting for the moon. Oh, awesome, it looks like we get to do our burn almost at periapsis. Which would be perfect, I mean, not that it gives us a whole lot of an advantage. No, um, no, it's gonna be after periapsis. Whoa, right up there looks good. And just drag the node. Oh, that's a bit too far. That is a collision course. How much of this can we save? Focus view. We would like to come in over the poles. So we're going to try to make adjustments to that nature. Whoa. Oh, come on. Really? So we're either going to hit it by a lot or fly past it entirely. Yeah, I like how we just go from a collision course to a total miss. I think the mathematics here are a bit confusing. Why is that not altering this path at all? 
And still only 3152 meters per second. Although I guess that is kind of an adjustment. not liking this whole polar orbit idea. Uh, I've got 21 minutes to figure this out. No, I have way less than that. And this burn will take six, so like 19 minutes to figure this out. Yeah, nothing I move is really making the adjustments, so let's just plot for impact so we're not littering space with our uh, S4B stage. And get ourselves oriented. 3153, we have, oh yeah, 3900 in the tank. So maybe once we're out a bit further, how far out? Is it even giving us an ascending or descending node? Nope. No ascending or descending nodes. Getting ourselves on target. Ullage. We'll take lots of ullage. The ignition. We are lit. Now we just gotta stay on this node. As best we can. J2s don't throttle, do they? They do throttle. Alright, well. 8.1 meters per second. Wow! That's a horrible encounter. That is horrible. Thanks for the no ascending or descending nodes, guys. Really? Alright. Uh, and the you're not going to let me plot a maneuver node, are you? Not here. Yeah, let's see how well this works. Alright, it worked. Yeah. Wow. Off by lots. That's worth using an ignition on the J2, isn't it? But at least from out there, we can pivot this up. 
and come in over the poles. Beautiful. Yep, we're gonna plot just for a grazing collision for our S4B stage. Hope free. 20 clicks. I'd like it to be at like 200 feet. 3,000. Uh, you know, maybe it'll hit something. 80 meters per second. So we're gonna get ourselves aligned. It's in three hours. I really wonder how much liquid hydrogen we'll have left by then. Considering these are not cryogenic tanks. Yeah. What else? Uh, I'm very nervous about doing a relatively low delta V burn with something as big as this J2. Ullage, very stable. Shut down. 5.1 meters per second shy. That's not too bad, right? Let's see how much of an adjustment we're actually making. Okay, good. Yeah, so we want to come in over the poles. And we also want to smash this S4B into the moon. What's up, Surfing Lizards? Good to see you, man. Uh, no worries. You, you haven't missed much. We just launched another uh, Griffin A2. We're going to try a polar landing on the moon, in case you haven't figured that out by seeing this already. <laughs> yeah. Alright, um, th that doesn't look very pole-like. Hmm. Okay. We're gonna keep it with that. Turn RCS off for the time being, and it's time to get our lander ready. And as you can notice, I have sped this part up in post because, like any docking, and those who watch the live stream will really attest to how long this docking in particular took. Uh, it was super frustrating, and I screwed it up a bunch, which is super typical because I had people watching me this time around. <laughs> well, did we just... Oops. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, my bad. Just, just... It's just some paint. It's just the paint. <laughs> Miracle I didn't bust that solar panel. <laughs> So then, back to the time warps after having scraped some paint off the lander and almost taking a solar panel off the uh, command module with us. Um, back to the more adjustments. Now this is sped up uh, eight times normal, so you can imagine exactly how slow and arduous this was going for uh, me and the unlucky victims of my live streaming attempt to try to watch it. So. Um, 
I'm doing you a favor by speeding this up so much and not making you watch it in arduous real time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think this happens to a lot of people and they try to dock something every single time. It's so frustrating. All right. Stay lined up, please. I, I wonder how off course we are now. <laughs> because we've just been doing all of this RCS thrustering around. Or, you know, not. Yeah, just brute force it on there, that's fine. Well, thank you, look lawyer. <laughs> okay, why are we not docked yet? Can we please just, uh, all right, this is ridiculous. Thank you. Oh, geez. <laughs> All right, and now the super cheaty part where I refuel all my fuel tanks. But I'll spare you having to watch it. That's going to do it for this episode, guys. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, I will be continuing this uh, tomorrow I have from more from my Extra Life 2016 live stream. Thanks for hanging out. See you then.